Well, welcome to my next uh, bowl video in this series of videos out of Carol Rothman's book. I'm jumping way ahead again. I really like those laminated bowls, and we'll do some more of them, but i got to get some different material in. Uh, I'm not following her guidelines specifically for the material, but I need uh, more contrast in the material to get the effects, and I've run out of some darker woods. So I'm going to uh, get some more stuff in. In the meantime, I'm going to tackle some of these other bowls. They've got some little different idiosyncrasies to them. This one's called a ripple edged round bowl and it's just one material. She did it out of mahogany. I'm going to do it out of walnut because that's what I've got available. I've got some mahogany but it's already earmarked for another bowl. Um, what we do here is we cut multiple different angles on this piece. It's uh, uh, you, you, first you start out cutting, you get the blank, here's my blank, and here's my pattern. I got the pattern there that goes on that blank. I'm going to center it on there. Now I got a big old knot right in here. But I believe it's mainly going to be outside my cutting. It may be a little tough cutting there the first ring or two. But we're going to cut, uh, I believe it's three rings, or two rings out of this. And anyway, the first cut's going to be at 30 degrees on this outside. The inner cut's going to be at 20 degrees. And then we're going to draw another, uh, use this to draw the next next ring. And it's going to cut the first one at 20 and the second one at 30. Well, when I, say, when I say second one, you're going to take the base and cut it at 30 degrees to angle it in to get this effect right here. Then we have another pattern. Going to take the first ring that we cut off and go and mount this pattern on it. And you're going to cut this scallop on it, and kind of a ripple there. And you're going to use two different that, uh, two different angles on that. The outside of that will be cut at 15 degrees, and the inside will be cut at 40 degrees. So you just want to take the edge off of that in those in those spots. You just want to take the edge off of that inside corner. And then you sand that ring a little bit before you glue it all together and then finish it all up with sanding. So it's multiple cuts, multiple angles. You've got to stay up with where you are and what you're doing. It'd be real easy to mess up an angle on this. So I'm, I've made some notes here and I lined them out step one, step two, so I make sure I use the right angle at the right time. So let me get this uh, pattern mounted. Get me the right blade in the saw and get the, get the saw set at the first first angle which is 30 degrees and we'll cut that outside spot and then I'll have to set my drill press at 20 degrees and drill that hole and we'll cut that at 20 degrees. So that's the first two cuts and then you need to reverse that go 20 and 30. So let me get it let me get it mounted on there and uh, we'll get to cutting on it. Alright got my table set at 30 I've got a number nine blade in there because I'm a little concerned about this knot. It may give me a little bit of trouble up here. And I'm not going to cut it real fast. I'm going to take it easy here. It's kind of a steep angle. And I'm going to get this cut. And now I'll have to drill a hole and do a 20 degree cut. Okay, that cut went real well. I couldn't even tell that knot was there. I'm so far away from it, I don't think it made a lot of difference. But uh, I've grilled this hole at 20 degrees. I've reset this table at 20. I went all the way back, make sure I had a 45 degree here, zeroed my meter, and then went to 20 degrees. I didn't just change 10 degrees from where I was. I always go back to original and reset. So now I'm going to cut this 20 degree and I'll do the same, use this to make the next pattern and do the same thing again. And then I'll set the base up here and cut around the outside edge at a 30 degree. Right now I'm going to cut this 20 degree to get this ring off and she said it probably won't match up real well because of the angle differences. But uh, that's okay, you're going to sand it out.
So I used that ring to mark my next pattern. Drill me another 20 degree hole. I'm still set at 20 degrees. I'm going to cut this one at 20. And then I'm going to reset my table at 30 and cut the base. I'll cut the edge off the base. Okay, I've reset this table to 30 degrees, and this is what's the, the base, and I'm going to cut in and just try to stay on that outside edge all the way around, and cut this, this off at 30 degrees from here down. Okay, I've mounted this pattern on top of the on the top of the top ring, and I'm going to cut. I've got the table on this saw set at 15 degrees in relation to the blade, and I'm going to cut this outside line with this. So I've reset this table to 40 degrees. I'm going to cut these little scallops right here out. And one thing we want to make sure we don't do is try not to cut the bottom of the ring. We don't want to cut so deep that we're getting into the bottom of it. We want that to match up with the ring below it. I don't think it's going to be a problem. That's a pretty steep angle. But I'll have to keep an eye on it as I go. Well, that cut out. I think it did it rather nicely. It didn't get the bottom anywhere I was not supposed to. Now she shows that you put it on a spindle sander and sand that before you glue it together. Now I don't have a spindle sander. I'm going to adjust my uh, drill press. I got a couple of a couple of uh, little spindle things to go on a drill. I'm going to use those. I got two or three different sizes. I'm going to set those up at the at the angles. 15 and and 40 and sand those a little bit. She said it'll be rough looking at that point but then when you glue it all together uh, you start making it look a little better. So I'm going to set that up and sand the inside and the outside of it with my little, little drill spindles. Okay, I've sanded <clears throat> the inside and outside of that. That's kind of a preliminary sanding because I'm going to glue these two together and then sand the inside just like you do with the other bowls and do that uh, i don't think it'll take much you only got one little little mark right there where the, where the drill bit went through and don't don't think there's anything on this one a little bit to clean up and uh, they match up pretty well so there won't be an enormous amount of sanding uh, at least not at this point <clears throat> uh, the base, she says, you can sand down if you want it thinner. I might do that. That's a lot of wood to sand down. I'm not too concerned about that right now. I'll think about that as I move forward. But I'm going to sand this, uh, glue it together right now, and then I'm going to sand the inside.
Uh, those two rings are glued together. It's the only two rings we have, actually. They match up really nice on the inside. A little bit different on the outside, but she said that's the way it would be. Just be a matter of uh, sanding that and keeping the uh, outline you have there that we've worked hard to cut and sand. I uh, got just one mark in here uh, to sand out and one out here. And then this top ring is going to have to be sanded down and keep that uh, contour, try to anyway. And so that's where we are. I'm going to sand the inside of it. It shouldn't take long. And then I'll put the put the base on. I may sand some of it down, cut it down a little bit, make it a little thinner. I'll now go sand this right now and we'll see what the next step is. Well, I sanded it down just a little bit. That's a lot of, a lot of sanding. I'm going to shape it a little bit when I get it all glued on. That's my next step. I'm going to glue the, the base onto the other two rings. And then I'll start shaping it. I'm going to do a lot of it with a flexible pad sander and an inflatable ball sander. And I will thin the, thin the top of it, kind of like the one in the picture like I've been doing, thin the top of it. I've got to carry these contours down to make these rings match and get that uh, grill mark out of it. And then I've got some things to smooth out on this, so and I'm going to round it down on the bottom. Well, that's my plan right now, so the next step is to glue it together. So I've got it glued together. Uh, see there's a big mismatch there. That was to be expected according to her instructions. But uh, I'm going to try to sand this outside. i got quite a bit of work to do there. To we'll try to make it look like that. And so I've got a lot of material there to take off. But I don't want to just take it to the belt sander and just start grinding down flat. I want to try to keep these contours. contours. So I've got this 2 inch flexible pad, pad sander with an 80 grit and I'm going to work on it slowly with that. It's going to take some time. I'm going to work that down try to get it looking like the one in the photo. I think it's going to make a nice looking bowl. It's going to take some work. Uh, and then when I get that done I'm going to go in with the flexible pads at uh, an inflatable sander and work on the inside and thin that top down and make it a little more finished looking. But it's going to be a lot of sanding here. So I'm not going to film all that because it could be two or three hours because I'll take several breaks. So let me get started on that. I'll check in if there's any updates to, to give on it. Well, there's kind of the preliminary rough sanding shaping. It's not going to look exactly like the bowl that she has. I kind of like the way this top is looking fluted out like that. And I'm going to take some more of it off. That's all with a 60 grit. I'm going to move up to 120 and go over it again. Do a little more shaping and cleaning and then probably go to another one even. Uh, and I get that kind of where I like it. I'm going to go inside with the inflatable ball sander and I'm going to thin this wall out all the way around give it a little fluted edge there. Uh, so I, I kind of like to put my own spin on these. It's not exactly like hers. Uh, of course it's different wood to start with. But I'm happy with it right now. I'm going to do a little more work on it. We'll see how it, what it looks like next time. Okay, I've got, it. Uh, I got two coats of wipe on poly on it. It's a uh, problem with this uh, bowl making like this. You're working with end grain when you start putting a finish on. And that soaks up lots and lots of finish. But that's two coats. Uh, I'm going to continue to put some more on it, but I'm going to call this good for the video because that's going to take days to get those on, to sand them, and, and uh, get it to look the way I want it. It's looking pretty good. The first coat will always bring out the grain and give you an idea of what it's going to look like. But like the last bowl I did, I think this one has got seven coats on it. And that's what I want this one to eventually look like. I don't know that this piece of walnut will ever look as good as that walnut. That's both walnut. This one, 
had a knot in it. I mean, you can see right there the, where the knot is, or was, and uh, that makes it a little darker, and it really soaks up a lot of finish, but I'm going to we'll continue with this, and uh, I'll probably put seven or eight more coats on it. It may take several days to do that, but as far as the cutting and the sanding of the bowl, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to do any more of that, of course, except to sand the finish between layers. It doesn't look exactly like hers. Uh, of course, she used mahogany to start with, but I, I like the way it turned out. I'm happy with it. And for a scrap piece of wood, I thought it was really nice. So, thanks for watching. And if you want to see, uh, if you haven't seen the video where I made this bowl, I'll put a link to it. That's called a basket weave bowl. And I'm really proud of that one. It turned out really nicely. So I'll put a link to that down there. So if you haven't seen it, you can go back and look at it. And uh, I've got a couple of more bowls in the, in the pipeline. Uh, if you want to see the bowl making, well, subscribe. And if you like that, hit the like button. And uh, you got any, any suggestions or uh, I'm open to ideas. You just tell me in the comments whatever you think about things and what you might like to see. Uh, this one is a little different because you had some cutting on the top ring to get that effect after you cut it out. This was a very interesting bowl, multiple angles. And it wasn't real difficult, but you had to pay attention to what she's doing. So if you like that, hit the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I uh, hope to see you in the next video.